This appealing fruit salad tray with minted French dressing perfectly complements the desert shoulder of lamb, which Florence Hanford prepares for you now in her television kitchen. Welcome to our Philadelphia Electric Television Kitchen. I really like it, don't you? And you know, cooking electrically is just like magic. You push a button or turn a switch and that's all there is to it. It's easy and fun, too. Today, we're going to prepare a meal in the oven of our electric range. We're going to have desert shoulder of lamb and for dessert, a chocolate bar pie. You know, I think it's a very good idea to prepare a meal all in one place. I think it's much easier to prepare it and also much easier to serve it. And you know, Reddy Kilowatt always enjoys helping us, and I'm sure he'd be very happy to help us today, wouldn't you, Reddy? And Reddy, wouldn't you like to show them what we're going to have on the complete menu for today? Desert shoulder of lamb, mashed potatoes au gratin, buttered green beans, a fruit salad tray with minted French dressing, and for dessert, a chocolate bar pie. Now, when you buy a shoulder of lamb, have it boned and rolled at your butcher's, and it looks very much like this when you get it home. Now, if you're going to stuff it, and we are going to stuff this shoulder of lamb, you must cut all of these strings and then start all over again and retie the meat up again. But it's kind of fun, I think, to prepare a stuffed piece of meat. We won't use this same string. We'll just take this off and use new string. It makes it much easier. Now, very often, you put a bread stuffing in your meat to sort of extend it. And this is a small roast. A shoulder of lamb is usually a small roast. And if you do want to extend it, you might like to use some bread stuffing in there. But today, we're adding a stuffing for flavor. So I'm just going to put in here some sautéed mushroom and onion. And that really adds to the flavor of the shoulder of lamb. When you roast a shoulder of lamb, use a temperature of 350 degrees and roast it for 35 to 40 minutes per pound. And whenever you roast meat, you should always take it out of the refrigerator a while before so it reaches room temperature because all recipes are given for meat at room temperature. Now, I always like to put some skewers in this to sort of hold it so that I can tie it. Holds that filling in. Now, we want to roast this meat, and whenever you roast a piece of meat, put it in a shallow pan and do not cover it. If you cover it, you're not really roasting it, you're braising it because the steam drops down from the lid and then you have moist heat. You probably won't have anyone in the kitchen to help you tie this up. So I'll show you what I usually do when I want to keep the knot straight. I turn it like that, see? And then you don't have to have an extra finger to put there. Now roast this on a, shall on a rack in a shallow pan. And uh, on your electric range, you don't have to baste it. You just put it in your oven and forget all about it. Now, I like to put a piece of string this way, too, but you remove this piece of string before you serve your meat because this is just to hold that filling in the end, and you have to have the other string in there to hold the meat together so that you can slice it down. Now we don't need these anymore. Your husband will probably like this because with no bone, it's not hard to carve. You just slice right down. There I have the rack in the bottom of the shallow pan. And that gives you circulation of heat all around it, see? It doesn't sit right down in the bottom of the pan. Now, there isn't very much fat on lamb, so just sprinkle it with a little melted shortening. And then you can either season it before you put the stuffing in or right now over the top with salt and pepper. And this is all ready now to roast at 350 degrees for 30 
to 35 to 40 minutes per pound. And we don't have time to wait for this one. And uh, I have one over in the oven that I'd like to show you, though. I wanted you to see how it looked first and then after it was baked. Now, I used a temperature of 350 degrees, and we have a thermostat on our electric range, and you can set that thermostat at any temperature that's called for in the recipe, and it automatically stays right at that temperature. We needed 350, so I set that at 350 degrees. When this light goes out, you know that the oven has reached temperature, and it's time to put your food in. And that light goes off and on automatically during the cooking process to keep it at the proper temperature. In other words, you do not use electricity for the full length of the cooking time, just enough to keep it at the proper temperature. Let's look at the meal now. Oh, you see, this is a nice large oven. As a matter of fact, I have the meat and the two vegetables right on one rack, and I have a whole rack there. So you can put more vegetables if you wanted them, or your dessert right on the top rack. Now we'll leave these right in here, and uh, that rack pulls out so it's easy to take anything out or put anything into your electric oven. And we'll serve those in just a very few minutes. Ooh, this is nice and brown and moist, and the top of it is nice and crisp too. That makes a wonderful roast. And we didn't pay any attention to it. We just put it into the oven and forgot all about it. Now, I think it will be much easier to remove this piece of string right here instead of waiting until we get it on the plate. I like to use the paper towels to lift this off. And you can make wonderful gravy with the essence that are left in the bottom of the pan. You see there's... There's a rack there and a lot of essence left in the bottom of the pan. Just put an equal portion of flour. You have so much essence and fat in there. Put an equal portion of flour in there and let that cook just a little bit. And then add your liquid gradually. You can use either vegetable liquid or water. And add it gradually in the very beginning and then faster after you get it started. Oh, you'll have wonderful gravy. I thought we'd use some fruit for garnish today. That goes very well with lamb. I know that uh, often we use uh, mint, but we're having a minted French dressing, so I didn't think we wanted any mint served with the lamb, too. So we're using some parsley and some spiced peaches. And of course, you might have your own spiced peaches, or you might like to buy these in a jar. You can. It's a very nice roast when you want to have a, a rather small roast for the family or for guests. And Mrs. Stephan, would you please put that over on the serving table for me? Thank you, Paula. Now, for the potatoes, and you notice we did have those in the oven, we're going to have mashed potatoes all broughten. And I always have my mixer very handy so that if I need it, and I do need it right now for the egg, it is handy. I don't have to go in a closet or anything to get it out. It's so easy to beat anything with an electric mixer, and that A will beat on number 10 speed, and on the dial on the back of the mixer, it says use number 10 speed for the beating of the A. Now, right on top of the range, keeping warm on the lowest heat, I have some potatoes, some mashed potatoes. And because of the controlled heat of our electric range, we can keep the potatoes warm right on top of the range in a saucepan. You do not need a double boiler. Now, I mash these using the electric mixer. They're nice and hot, and all I added to them was a little bit of milk. Now, we'll add some seasonings, and we're going to use salt and paprika. And this adds a little color to the potatoes. And you can use butter or margarine. Now, the recipe for these potatoes and for the lamb and for everything that I'm going to prepare for you today, we have on a recipe sheet. And if you're a customer of the Philadelphia Electric Company and you'd like to have that recipe sheet, just drop a postal card to me, Florence Hanford, Philadelphia Electric Company, Philadelphia 5, and we'll send you the recipes for this complete meal. I'll give you my name and address a little later, and you can copy it down and send for those recipes. And we have that all melted. So easy to remove these beaters. You just pull the handle down. I think they're pretty well cleaned off themselves, so we don't have to bother cleaning those off. And 
we can add the beaten egg to these potatoes. It makes a nice change, I think, to have your mashed potatoes served in a different manner. We're going to add something else to these, though, in just a very few minutes that make them even better. I'll mix this in carefully, but thoroughly. You see, we don't have to worry about anything sticking on the inside of our pan we cook electrically. That's because of that controlled heat I was talking to you about. Nothing sticks on the inside of your pan when you cook electrically. And you know the outside of the pan is nice and clean, too. Because electric cooking is clean cooking, it's fast, and it's cheap to operate in the electric range. You get such wonderful results when you cook electrically that it's lots of fun to cook electrically. I really enjoy it, and I'm sure you would, too, if you'd cook electrically. You know, it's cool cooking, too. Get every bit of that, see? Now, for the very top of this, we want some grated cheese. Sprinkle it all over the top. And some buttered crumbs. And these are just dry bread crumbs to which I've added some butter. You can add butter or margarine. Now, this bakes at 350 degrees, the same temperature as you use for the meat, for the last half hour of the baking of the meat. We don't have time to wait for that one either, so I have another one so you can see it after it comes out of the oven. Top of it is nice and brown. You notice it did come up, too, because it has that egg in it. It makes it come up and get nice and light. Isn't this a, an easy meal? It's very easy to serve, too. And uh, I've always found that it's a good idea to have this kind of meal when you're having company. I have a lot of company, and I enjoy company. But I think a lot of people who, are, who have uh, company, oh, they uh, go to so much trouble and work so hard that really you don't have a good time either if you're the company because you're afraid that they have spent too much time getting the meal ready. But if you have it all in the oven and then just take it out and have something that you had already ahead of time, that's what I always do. So that the last minute you don't have to worry about dinner. You just take it out and serve it. Then they think you're sort of magician, you know, because you get it right out at the last minute. Now I'm going to put a little bit of parsley right there in the center and see serve that right in the casserole and Paula would you put that on the serving table I'm going to leave that down there because it's hot now the other vegetable we're having is green beans and uh, we cook those right in the oven too and you can you can cook your vegetables right in the oven while you're preparing your meal it takes a little bit longer to cook your vegetables in the oven. Uh, these cook for the last hour of the cooking of the meat. But as long as you're using your oven, you might as well put your vegetables right in there and cook them along too with the rest of your meal. Now I'm finished using that oven, so we'll just turn it off. When you lift the casserole lid up, lift it so that the steam does not go in your face like that. See, you are sure you won't get burned. Now, I cook these in just a little bit of water, too. And even when you cook your vegetables in the oven, you only need a little bit of water. And uh, keep that liquid, because there's food value in it. You could use it in the gravy in this particular meal. I'm using a slotted spoon so that uh, you can drain them as you serve them. And these are the French frozen green beans. You don't want to overcook your frozen vegetables because they have been blanched, so they are partially cooked, and you want to cook them just until they are tender. Try to get every bit of these. We don't want to waste any, do we? Now, uh, I always like to have one plain vegetable, and uh, one vegetable that's a little different. And of course, uh, the potatoes were a little different. So let's just put butter and margarine over the top of the beans and let it melt down. 
and some salt and pepper from the salt and pepper mill. And these are ready to serve. Well, our meal is really growing, isn't it? I thought we'd have a very attractive salad today, a fruit salad tray, and we're going to have minted French dressing with that. I think a, a fruit salad is always good because you can have different kinds of salad and vary it by just changing the kind of fruit that you use in the salad. Now let's make the dressing first, and I always use a shaker because French dressing separates when you allow it to stand and you need to shake it, and a shaker comes in very handy for that. I always like to put the oil and the lemon juice in first, because then it isn't so hard to get these dry ingredients to shake up in the shaker. A little sugar, some salt, and paprika for flavor, just a little prepared mustard. And this is a mint dressing, so of course we want some mint jelly. And I beat this with the electric mixer because it makes it so nice and light. And it mixes in much better if you do that. This recipe, too, is on your recipe sheet, and when you send for the recipes, you'll get the recipe for the French dressing. You know, I think many of you have a Lazy Susan like this. I use it all the time, you know, for cakes, and I think it's a good idea to use it in different ways, and a salad looks so attractive on a Lazy Susan. You want to put that in there first so we have a space for the dressing. Sometimes you get started on the fruit, and you don't have enough room to get the dressing in the center. Now for the green, I'm going to use some um, lettuce, and I have these lettuce cups. I like to mash it down a little bit, and isn't that nice and crisp out of the hydrator? I like them to keep the cups, but still you, you want to be able to get the salad in there too. Put a little watercress on, then I think we can garnish it with a little bit more later. I'm quite fond of watercress. Do you like watercress? Now for the fruit, we have some orange slices. It sort of sticks up there, doesn't it? Whenever you're planning a salad, too, plan the different shapes of fruit instead of having it all exactly alike. Now I think we'll put the grapefruit over here. And I have the grapefruit sectioned. I want to make it just as easy as possible to eat, too. going to have some pear, and I uh, cut the pear in wedges, and I left the skin on the pear too. I think that makes it much more attractive when you leave the skin on the pear. Now we have some apple slices, and I left the skin on the apple too. And all, uh, both apple and pear, and also banana, discolors if you allow them to stand out in the air. So it's always a very good idea to sprinkle them with a little citrus fruit, fruit, fruit juice. You might use the grapefruit juice, or you might like to use lemon juice. You know, you can always sort of fill in with the apple to sort of add a little more color. We have a couple more fruits that I want to put in here, too. Some uh, sliced banana. And 
some pineapple wedges. You can use either the can or the frozen, and I really have to find a place for these, don't I? Might like to put them all around like that because most everyone likes to have a little of this, I think, with their salad. Looks pretty, doesn't it? Ooh, that one went in there, but we'll leave it in there. Now for the final garnish, a little watercress. And I think we can put that around the outside edges here. And you see, everyone can help themselves to a little salad just by turning the, ball, the um, Susan around like this. You know, you could serve that for a luncheon salad, too, couldn't you? And everyone can just have the kind they like. And, Paula, would you please put that over on the serving table? I'll hold that one for you. Thank you. <laughs> now, for dessert, we're going to have a very delicious dessert today. It's called a chocolate bar pie. And I have made the pie crust for you many times, so today I thought maybe we would fill it for you and show you how to make the filling instead. But the recipe for the pie crust, too, is on your recipe sheet. And when you send for the recipes, you'll get that recipe, too. Now here again, we need the electric mixer because we're going to beat an egg white. You know, whenever you beat an egg white, you always must have absolute clean beaters. So we're starting out with a fresh pair of beaters. And I have the egg white in this small mixer bowl. Here again, we turn it up to number 10 speed on the dial on the mixer, it says use number 10 for the beating of the egg. Now I baked the pie shell for you ahead of time. And you bake your pie shell at 450 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. And isn't that a beautiful pie shell? Nice and brown and it's baked just perfect in your electric range. And you always get those same wonderful results when you bake electrically, just perfect. We're gonna fill that one, but first we wanna have this white. It didn't take very long at all, did it, for that to beat. Now here we have some of the nice light egg there, so we want to clean those off and get all of that off. Now I whipped some cream using the electric mixer, and I have it in that bowl. Now you fold the egg white and the cream together. Fold it, do not beat it, because you see we just beat a lot of air both in the cream and in the egg white. Get all of that, don't I? And we don't want to beat that out, so just fold this in. Lift it up and turn it over, fold it in carefully. Now I started to make this filling because part of it had to cool. And in this saucepan, I have the filling that I started to make. I took some um, marshmallows, and you take part of a large um, milk chocolate almond bar and some milk and put it in a saucepan and allow it to heat on a low heat on your electric range. And because of the control heat, you can put it right into a saucepan and do that. And stir it occasionally until the marshmallows have melted and the chocolate has melted. Then chill that. And that's what I have in that pan. And this recipe, too, is on your recipe sheet. And incidentally, uh, I was invited out for dinner one night, and they served this pie, and I liked it so much, I asked for the recipe. And, uh, well, the hostess was very happy to give it to me. And I took it back to the office, and we tested it. We test and taste all the recipes before we have them printed, and well, we liked it so much, and I hope that you will, too. And it's an easy pie to make. It has a milk chocolate flavor. Now, I'm going to put this into the baked pie shell, remember. See how nice and smooth that is? This is an almond bar, so see you're getting some almonds in the pie also. I'm sure you'd like to try this pie. Now, this must chill before you cut it. So be sure and put it in your electric refrigerator 
and allow it to chill thoroughly before you cut it. You might like to allow it to chill for several hours. I like to make it the day before. And here again, if you're having company, you have the pie all out of the way if you make it the day before. Now, I have one all chilled. And you can serve it just as it is without any garnish at all if you'd like. Or you can garnish it with just a little bit of uh, heavy cream. And I thought we'd put a little heavy cream around it and sort of dress it up. Not too much, though. Just some spoonfuls around the outside. You might like to just drop it like that and then leave a little bit of space in between. And then each person probably get just a little bit of the cream. Make such a luscious pie. Doesn't have any gelatin in it, you know, just the chocolate and the marshmallows. Like it that way? I think it looks very attractive that way, too. Well, that uh, completes our meal. Oh, and incidentally, you know, when you have an electric freezer, there's so many things that you can get ready ahead of time. I like to use my electric freezer, too so that I'm ready for any emergency. And isn't this a beautiful upright freezer? Well, now for this pie, you could have your pie shell all made ready to bake right here in the moisture-proof, vapor-proof bag. I have a label on it, too, with a date so that you use the ones that you make first, first, and the ones that uh, are put into the freezer uh, at the last minute or uh, just two days before or something like that. You save those until a little later. Now, this is a vapor-proof, moisture-proof bag, and all you have to do is just put it into the bag and turn it under and freeze it. And when you're ready to serve it, just take it out. While it is still frozen, put it into your oven and bake it. Or you could have the pie shell all baked, like I have here, ready to fill. And just take it out and fill it and put it in your refrigerator with your filling in it and then serve your pie when the pie has set. Or... You could have your chocolate bar pie, all frozen, labeled, and wrapped in your vapor-proof, vapor moisture-proof bag. Now, when you want to thaw this, take it out and put it on a rack right in the bag. And allow it to thaw right in the bag, but not completely thawed, just a little bit of ice in it. Then put it in your refrigerator, and when you're ready to serve it, it will be just like a freshly baked pie or made pie. the quick freeze part. You always put them up there first when you want to freeze it in a hurry and then of course put them down further. So you always put them up here first and then transfer them down. Well now let's look at our complete meal. We have the desert shoulder of lamb, the mashed potatoes au gratin, the fruit salad tray with the minute French dressing, the buttered green beans, and the chocolate bar pie. And I know that you're convinced that the electrical appliances give you wonderful results. And if you'd like to see the different models of these and other electrical appliances, just go to your local electric dealer or any Philadelphia electric showroom, and they'd be very happy to show them to you. I hope that you have enjoyed our Philadelphia Electric program as much as we have enjoyed bringing it to you. Don't forget, if you're a customer of the Philadelphia Electric Company and you'd like to have these recipes, just drop a postal card to me, Florence Hanford, Philadelphia Electric Company, Philadelphia 5. Remember, that's Florence Hanford, Philadelphia Electric Company, Philadelphia 5. Remember to look in again next week when we're going to have some other interesting dishes for you. So at the same time next week, tune in. Until then, goodbye.